Welcome to the I Get Chem channel where we help you learn chemistry by showing you how to do problems. So today's video is on a question related to acid-base strings. So let me read the question first and we will get to the solution. So the question is, using the table of Ka values, order the following bases by their relative strings. And the five bases here are H2O, F minus, Cl minus, NO2 minus, and Cn minus. Okay, so here is the solution. So while uh, this uh, seems like a really short problem, there are a couple of in important concepts behind it which I want to go over first. But uh, let's uh, make a list of the compounds that uh, are in the question. So we have uh, H2O, uh, F minus, Cl minus, uh, NO2 minus, and Cn minus. So, um, of course, uh, we are uh, asking how strong are these five bases relative to each other. So, acting as a base, um, a compound is going to try to abstract a proton from uh, water molecules in the solution and undergo a reaction like this. So I'm going to use a generic uh, label, generic name for the base. I'll just call it uh, X minus. So if X minus is a base, its action is to steal a proton from the H2O, turning it into OH minus and itself becoming HX. So the equilibrium constant for X minus acting as a base is uh, written as uh, OH minus concentration multiplied by the HX concentration divided by the X minus concentration. So that equilibrium constant KB, it's called KB because it's for a base, uh, so the strength of the base X minus depends on the value of KB. The larger KB is, the stronger the base X minus would be. So uh, if you look at this, then you can see that in each of these compounds, so F minus, so you can think of that as be being X minus in this equation, so that equation can be written for F minus. And also, similarly, for Cl minus, NO2 minus, Cn minus, you can basically substitute each of those four into this equation for X minus, and you would be able to sort of figure out what Kb should be. Um, the last one, which is a little strange, or different, not necessarily strange, is H2O. Uh, H2O doesn't have a minus charge, so in that case, uh, you would think of H2O as X minus, and so let me just write that down explicitly so you know what I'm talking about. So if H2O is acting in the place of X minus, the rest of this equation is the same. But then when H2O acts as a base and abstracts a proton from another H2O, itself is going to become H3O plus. You see the, so you see the equivalence of this HX in the case where X minus is H2O is actually H3O. So now you can write down the uh, KB for that reaction. It turns out that for this reaction, the equilibrium constant is basically just equal to OH minus concentration multiplied by the H3O plus concentration which is, uh, and, and the, both of the reactants are just H2O, and they have no concentrations, so they don't show up in Kb. So you recognize that the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction is just what we usually call Kw. Kw is the equilibrium constant for the auto-ionization of water. And you know what that is, so that is 10 to the minus 14. Right, So the Kb for H2O is really just Kw, and the value for that is 10 to the minus 14. So we don't have to look that up. So that, that we know. 
Uh, so what we need to do is to basically figure out how, what are the values for KBs for the other four. Now the problem tells you to uh, try to figure that out, not from a table of KB values, but from a table of KA values. So we have to next try to understand what that actually means. Now of course KA is for an acid. So for every base, there is a conjugate acid. So there is a Ka value for the conjugate acid for all of these bases. So before we go further, let's see if we can figure out what the conjugate acids of each of these bases are. So, so here we have the, the base. And so right above them, I am going to write down the conjugate acid for each of these bases. <coughs> so you can see that for F minus, the conjugate acid is uh, the result of adding one proton to F minus. So the conjugate acid of F minus is HF. Same logic, conjugate of Cl minus would be HCl. Conjugate acid of NO2 minus would be HNO2. And for CN minus, it would be HCN. So these are the conjugate acids of the five, uh, of the four bases um, it on the second line. And just to be complete, I'm going to write down the conjugate base, a uh, conjugate acid of H2O, which of course, as you can see from this equation, is H3O. Okay, so to, to <coughs> remind myself that these are conjugate acid base pairs. I'm just going to call these conjugate base conjugate acid because every pair of these compounds is called a conjugate acid base pair. That is when you transform the acid into a base you will get the conjugate base of that acid and vice versa if you transform a base to an acid. So these are called conjugate acid base pairs. So of course, for each of these conjugate acids, there is a Ka value, and often the Ka values are given in tables. So the problem is asking you to look up the Ka values for these conjugate acids and use them to infer the Kb values. So I'm going to uh, look that up. Um, so um, your book would have a list of all of these Ka values. Um, uh, it turns out that the values of the Ka's uh, listed in different books are often slightly different. Uh, the magnitudes are similar, but the precise values are sometimes a little different. So what I am going to do is to just give you the Ka values that I have. You might have slightly different ones, but magnitude-wise, they should be about the same. So for Ka of HF, this is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. For HCl, uh, because it's a strong acid, uh, the Ka value for HCl is very large. For HNO2, Ka is 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4, and for HCN is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10. So uh, for each of these acids, the conjugate base would then have a Kb value. So I'm going to use the third column for the Kb of the conjugate base, but here I'm going to just make a list of what the conjugate base is. So they are actually, they are of course what's on top, so right there. Okay, so to remind myself, I'm going to call these the conjugate base <coughs> of These, which are the conjugate acids. Okay, so what I need is to try to figure out the value for Kb so that I can use them to compare the strength of these uh, bases against each other. 
So um, it turns out that the uh, there is a relationship between K B of the conjugate base with K A of the conjugate acid, and the relationship is this. I'm just going to write it down. So K B of the conjugate base is just K W, which is 10 to the minus 14, divided by K A of its conjugate acid. So if we have the conjugate acid value from this column, then we can use them to calculate the KB value in this column. So let me just do that. And so if you do that correctly, you would see that uh, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 gives you 1.4 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, for the second one, HCl, uh, if Ka is very large, then you're dividing something by a very large number, so that is going to be roughly zero for Cl minus. Uh, for HNO2, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 4 gives you 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. And finally, for HCN, 10 to the minus 14 divided by H um, divided by 6.0 uh, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10 turns out to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so just to remind you, KW again is just 10 to the minus 14. So there we have our table of KB values, and based on that, we can use that to decide which one is the strongest and which one is the weakest. Uh, so just one more thing, going back to this one, uh, we have already decided that the KB value for H2O is just equal to KW. So let me put that uh, on the table too. So finally, we have uh, H2O acting as a base. This KB value is just 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so using those values, then we can order these bases in terms of their strengths. So uh, we see that Cn minus is the, has the largest Kb, so that is number one. Uh, and then we have uh, NO2 minus. And then after that, we have F minus. And uh, we have after that H2O which is number four. And finally, Cl minus would be the weakest base because this Kb is even smaller than H2O. So that's number five. Okay, so these are the proper ordering of the relative base strengths of these five compounds. Now, before I stop, uh, before I end this video, I'm going to uh, say one more thing, which might, uh, which might be useful. Uh, to think about. So oftentimes we can essentially sort of figure out the strength of the conjugate base based on the strength of its conjugate acid. So uh, let me just do this uh, in this table right here. So if we put on the left the conjugate acid and on the right is conjugate base, Depending on the strength of the acid, we can predict the strength of its conjugate base. And the way it usually works is if you have a weak acid, its conjugate base is also weak. So a weak acid produces a weak conjugate base. So in the compounds that are, that are in this list, these three, so C, N minus, N O two minus, and F minus would be considered to be weak bases. So their conjugate acids, H C N, H N O two, and H F are considered to be weak acids. So the conjugate base of a, of a weak acid is a weak base. So that association is given by this line, the second 
uh, this line and the disassociation in the table. However, if you have a strong acid, let me use a different color. So if you have a strong acid, then the conjugate base of a strong acid is usually considered to be neutral. So, so uh, for example, in this case, we know that HCl is a strong acid. So as a result of that, the conjugate base of HCl, which is Cl minus, is neutral. Now, oftentimes the language is a little confusing because in the in some of the Gen Chem classes, the uh, students sometimes are taught that the the uh, the conjugate uh, base of a strong acid is a, is a really weak base. Now, while that is true, I think that language is a little confusing. So I often tell my students to think of it this way: the conjugate base of a weak acid is a weak base. But the conjugate base of a strong acid is a neutral base. I mean, it's such a weak base that it essentially is neutral. So I think that language is a little bit more clear. So the association is a strong acid would have a neutral conjugate base. So finally, going to the, to the last case, where you have a strong base the conjugate acid of a strong base is then considered to be neutral. So, so the, again, uh, a lot of times we tell students to think about the conjugate base of uh, the conjugate acid of a strong base to be very weak. But again, I think that language is confusing. So it's best to think about the conjugate acid of a strong base to actually be a neutral acid. So the example of that would be, for example, this. So we see in this case, for example, OH minus is a strong base. The conjugate acid of OH minus, as you can see, is um, is H2O. So we know that H2O is neutral. So the conjugate acid H2O of a very strong base, OH minus, itself should be considered to be neutral. So I hope that, uh, I hope that um, it's something that you would uh, try to remember so that you can make sense of the strength of conjugate acid base pairs. Okay, so that's the end of the solution. So if you uh, have enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video.